right, guys, we have Tina Cannon on the show today. She is a world foods champion. She's the, I'm going to say it, the champion of the American barbecue showdown. She's also an accomplished cook and competitor of pit crew. And she also has her own website, Tina Cannon Cooks, which you can go on there and sign up for a subscription. And she can teach you all of the things that she knows and does, which she does well. Tina, how are you today? I'm awesome. Good. I, well, if, you, if I was any better, you couldn't stand it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've been wanting to get on our show for a long time. I, I have, like I told you, I am a big fan. Um, I'm a huge fan of the show BamaQ, which you're part of. And you and Chester are my top favorite people on there. So, yes, you're hilarious. <laughs> and uh, it's a great, great show. That's where I kind of, you know, but then of course the Netflix series and different things like that. So, but you know, let's just start at the beginning. Where did you get into cooking period, let alone just barbecue? Oh God, that was when I was really young. My mom would tell you the opposite story. It really started in home ec. If you want to go all the way back to high school, um, because my mom and dad were great cooks. And my grandfather was a fantastic cook. And I used to stand up in a little stool and up beside him next to the stove. And uh, it kind of started back back then. And then I decided to go to culinary school. Uh, and then I got home from cutting. I'm going to just cut it short because, you know, there's a lot in between all that. <laughs> but um, I went to culinary school, school was an honor grad. And um, Back then, women did work in the kitchen a lot. I was the only female student in my class, and it was um, hard to find the job. I mean, uh, I had to work one place as a dishwasher to prove myself mm. uh, for free. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, you know, I know we just in the early, early 80s, there were very, very few women. Where, I know that sounds weird. Uh, in kitchens, mostly just servers. Um, you see some prep people, you know, but I uh, I finally just kept plugging along, kept plugging along, and eventually I got to stay somewhere for a while. In fact, where I was a dishwasher for free, um, never forget the chef's name. His name was Jeff Barta. If you're watching, hey, uh, <laughs> he, I mean, I've never seen him, you know, in years and years and years. But I was working there for free as a dishwasher, and it's real common for cooks not to show up uh, night before a little, you know, this mm -hmm. kind of thing. Um, so he looks at me down at the dish sink and he says, all right, you're on. That was it. <laughs> so I, I went and actually cooked on the line that night and I stayed on the line from then on, you know, uh, very, very fancy high end restaurant in Atlanta at the time. So it was an amazing, like first, like experience of cooking, like in a real restaurant under a lot of pressure, you know. So I stayed there a while. I did a stint with Marriott um, in, a, in the higher end JW. I worked in some other higher end restaurants. I opened my own restaurant in Florida. Did that for a while. Decided I don't want to do that anymore. <laughs> Too much work. And just catered, um, you know, working for myself because I found that my boss, when you work for yourself, you can usually get along with most of the time. So I did that for a long time. And, um, did some consulting. So it's just keep rolling and then I might give away my age. So pushing <laughs> sixty now. So now now I just compete in barbecue. I do I'm starting a small business, like a homebound business where we do like private parties and events and of course my website, syndicatingcooks.com. And uh, <laughs> So where, you know, people can subscribe to recipes. So I've developed and I'm coming up to the age where I no longer have to work online. Um, I do book for a large charity here in my community. Y'all probably know that. Mm -hmm. um, for Mills on Wheels of Coweta. Coweta is my county. And I just got the stat because the end of the year meeting that came through about two or three weeks ago alone, I cooked 42,000 meals. For wow. meals and meals of so I sling some food. That's for sure. <laughs> right. Can you now? I have an assistant part time. About what? How many hours a week? She's probably 12, 14 hours a week, maybe. Wow. She just started. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of meals, dude. That's it you know, is. out of those like forty-two thousand. I cook that for my kids yeah. every year, and out of those forty-two thousand, only microwave. two my kids like out oh. of all forty-two thousand. Yeah, yeah. What were they? <laughs> 
What are they? Mac and cheese, yeah. and then also mac and cheese. Uh, yeah, I'm <laughs> one like with that. bacon, one without bacon. <laughs> <laughs> right. Can you tell us a little bit about your transition from the kitchen to outdoor cooking and into the barbecue scene? Just is that always just been part even of you? Even if it's a long story, even oh, yeah, if it's yeah, kind it's of dope, weird. Yeah. And, it, and I have told this on a lot of interviews. So if you're bored, turn down the volume, go get some chips or whatever, and come back. <laughs> um, it was a, it was like 2009, roughly. A huge storm came through uh, the town I was living in at the time, which is the next town over. And so we had our, I know this sounds weird, but we had our roofs replaced. And there was like a dozen workmen there working on the roof, trying to get it done because another storm was coming. So I I fed them. And I had a little Brinkman, if I can say a brand, Mm -hmm. that my husband and I had used our points. You know, to get something free. I'm like, well, I got luggage. I got a clock radio. Got booster. Ah, I'm going to get a smoker. Because I did like to cook outside. I mean, I had a Weber when I was 10. You know, I'd cook, you know, with my dad. He burnt everything. But, you know, I'd cook, he'd let me cook hot dogs and crap like that. So, um, anyway, the workmen were there. So, I was like, I smoked pork butt. I smoked chicken. I did ribs. You know, a bunch of stuff. You know, because they were there working really hard. And I thought, well, yeah. I'll cook for them. So the very, they were there like four days straight, I believe. And on the last day, the superintendent came by. And of course, you know, Southern people come on in and eat with us, you know, I'm feeding everybody, you know. And um, he sat down and ate and looked right at my husband, not me, and said, this is some darn good barbecue. Mm -hmm. And my husband goes, (laughs) and then pointed at me. He continued to talk to him about it. And, you know, whatever i just finally after like three times him said oh this is good i'm like we'll get you another plate because i think that day i had uh brisket and pork butt that day and he went to his truck after he finished eating he brought back an application for a kcbs contest in lake martin alabama and uh i went and i won oh wow nice first contest but the thing is it was backyard you know division you didn't have to cook all of the meat you cooked three you didn't do brisket and I even had to send my husband oh, that day when we got there. We didn't realize like how it worked. I had to go to a big box store and buy another smoker. Oh. You know, oh, I, <laughs> I don't even know what brand Charbor. I don't know. Some brand, you know, like a hundred dollar brand. <laughs> and uh, so to cook that much, we really didn't realize that the turn in times. That, yeah, we didn't. We didn't know that. So, but we won anyway. And it rained. Uh, we got we were the last people to show up, and I got ant bit everywhere uh, because we were like in like a mud pit, and all the ants. Were. Oh, man. It was the people on the campsite, like right next to us, got in a big fight, and they're breaking beer bottles. It was it was a I can't believe I'm still doing it after that experience, but I am. Are you sure you're in a NASCAR event? Sorry, <laughs> it was very close. To that. Very close. To that. Like, I was like being in the infield. It really was. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, but you know, it just kind of started, you know, and then we started going to contests and kind of watching and, you know, figuring out what, you know, what timelines and things like that. Then I bought some Webers, cooked on three Webers and did like MBN, GB, you know, several different divisions, not just KCBS and did all right. I mean, it's not like, you know, I want anything. Well, some things I did, but you know, it just it just kept on, and then finally, some people got you know, can I say pissy about it, and so they said you need to go pro. So I did, and I don't think I got a call for at least two years at all, <laughs> because pro is very different. Managing for me ended up like moving on to a different kind of smoker. I loved my Weber's. I tell you, I still know the guy that has my original one. He still loves it. But so now I cook on a gravity fed. So and and Scott Smith, I don't know if y'all know Scott, Q and Stewart and Bruin, um Southern Q smokers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I no, don't know. Familiar. It's a gravity fed smoker. Uh so he builds my smokers and my rigs for me. So and has for several years now. So it's went from a Brinkman to a big, you know, gravity fed cabinet smoker that's, you know, big. <laughs> Right. That's, <laughs> that seems like the trend a little bit, you know, when, when you get into yeah. competition barbecue, you're like, I got this charbroil, you know, or this Weber. Mm-hmm. And then you win one and then you're like, I need a better smoker. And then you just slowly start gravitating 
towards more and more expensive grills as you go. So that's true. You know, and I've got pellet smokers and, um, you know, I'm an ambassador for green egg. I don't know if y'all know that. And that's been real. I've cooked on uh commodity style smokers before, but a green egg, you know, they're not all the same. And I actually really have enjoyed cooking on the egg. Um, I did almost like half the videos I just shot out of, the 18 I did this weekend, these last three and a half days, were on the egg. So I really, really enjoy cooking on that. But, you know, that's, for me, not practical to take that with me, you know, if you're traveling, you know. Uh, so I say that for everything here at the house, and I have three smokers. Also, one of my affiliates, I've been with Gorilla Grills for about four or five years, mm-hmm. I guess, now. Uh, and I, I still love them. I mean, I don't need anything else. I got three. You know. <laughs> and then I have my gravity pad, you know, with Hugh and Stone and Bruce. He built that for me. Um, you know, then I have a couple others. <laughs> right. It sounds pretty. <laughs> I, have, so I have a new one. <laughs> I have a new one. Matter of fact, I have to tell them when they can bring it. Uh, I haven't told anybody yet. Oh, here we go. Breaking news. We need the button. We need a breaking news button. Well, <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. Did he, did he, did he? No, because I haven't. You know, I don't know, since I'm new to social media, I don't know if I should announce that on, like, my website first. Should I? No, all the same you. time. You got to do, do it all. No, you should do it here. Well, do it here. Do it okay. now. Okay. I've never cooked on one of these types of smokers, and I had never heard of one. And I'm like, now I'm like, thrilled. It's called Orion Smokers. What Orion? is it? Have you heard? Orion? Yeah. I'm so <clears> excited <throat> because let me tell you, the cook time, like, you can cook a brisket in, like, three hours. So it's like this can shape thing with the charcoal around yeah. the edge. You put it around the outside and the, oh, you're Googling it right now. Oh, and yeah. you put it oh, on yeah. top. Yeah. So I'm so excited to, you know, get one and start cooking on it. I mean, I don't know. Um, our relationship may not be like sponsorship or whatever, but I thought the first thing came to mind was if I could cut a brisket cook time, <laughs> even oh, in half, gosh, right? you know. Mm-hmm. I can't wait to get it. Right. I mean, I've already ordered some uh, Snake River gold briskets to try to cook on it. But you could hang ribs on it. I mean, I'm I mm. can't wait. I've watched every YouTube video because <laughs> I can't wait to get it. It's really cool. It's really cool. It's really cool and it's stainless, but in and it's like portable. Yeah, I was going to say it's like it's three hundred bucks. Yeah, so, I was yeah. like. Hmm. Yeah, I think they're more than that. But well, well I, maybe that depends on all the options. That's the original. But I'm like, OG I can't one. wait to get it. You know? Yeah. Oh, you looking at gorillas now? No, no we're looking at Orions. Orions. Yep. Oh, okay. Yeah, all they right. look really cool. So maybe we we'll have to get you on a live later down the road, and we'll talk about that and yeah, talk try about to your cook experience. On it. Yeah. Yeah. But well, I if do, you want to have know. them send us some, we'll try to cook on it. <laughs> <laughs> or y'all want to come here? Sure. Because, yeah. <laughs> you know, a couple of guys from uh, North Barbecue, Texas, North Texas Barbecue Addicts were just here. And they just left last night. Well, they flew out this morning, but they left last night. And uh, they've been here for a few days cooking with me. We did like a burger battle. and Oh, my Lord. Oh, cool. I Thanks. won. I won the burger bath. There you go. She doesn't Guess lose. if you're watching. <laughs> she doesn't lose. I won. Yeah. Oh, she said what? She's like, yo face. <laughs> yeah. That is classic. You got to watch the YouTube video just to see that response there, people. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, but it was it was good. He did like a couple lives with his group because he has a large Facebook group, you know. It's like 79, 80,000. So oh. it was, it was kind of crazy. And then I made him, I'm like, Mm. <laughs> I'm sorry. It, it mm. was a good burger. I did whip out homemade bacon jam, you know, to put on it. So. You know, it's not yeah. fair because you come from a classically trained background, you know, and when it comes to that kind of stuff, you have the advantage because let's be honest, a lot of these barbecue people, they don't really work in that realm. You know, they're barbecue people, and there's a, there is a, there's a huge it difference. It's a burger. But, it was uh, yeah, a burger. But, Come on. You know, man. but you're doing all these fancy, you know, rubs and this and that for your, your seasonings and stuff that's just a little bit different. You know, you can tell when there's a culinary influence into some barbecue. And mm-hmm. then when it comes to these kind of things like burgers, mm-hmm. I'm sorry, mm-hmm. it's like it's a trap, you know. Like I always say <laughs> this is what I always say about you. Like I when people were watching the, the barbecue showdown, I'm like, she's not she's a killer, dude. Like she's nice, 
Look at she. Yeah, of course. She's too nice to win this. I'm like, dude. Yeah, she'll yeah. drink your blood. Like, <laughs> she's gonna win this thing. Watch, she will. And then, sure enough, I, I should have put money on it. But uh, you know, you know, I mean, I've had people say I shouldn't have won. So, oh, there's no way. Whatever. Rusty thinks that every time. He's like, I should win every time. I should win every time. And it's rigged, or I don't. It's the only. I wish I could win every time. I wish. Gosh, I like. I have my first contest since COVID hit. Uh, coming uh march i think it's the sixth so and i actually that contest i think i only cooked it twice and i did i, I granted it once and then i know i got at least two good calls or three good guy have to look up the stats on it the, the other time that i cooked it so we'll see what competition I'm not is rusty. that uh it's uh sip and swine sip and swine Sippin's one, yeah, mm -hmm. Lawrenceville, Georgia, and yeah, raises money for uh, a really good charity there. Yeah, the guy's been in, that's heading it up, been involved with for a long time. So I'm excited about doing it. I don't know the protocol, like how is it going to be different? I don't know, you know. But I mean, it's the same meat, but I don't know about COVID protocol with that. Well, just from our experience. Um, the competitions that we did during COVID, it's they like you to stay in your tents. Um, when you do turn-ins, they want you to wear a mask and gloves. And oh, okay. so you have to wipe your box down. Yeah, with wipe your sanitizer. Yeah, wipe, wipe your box down. So that's how we've done it, and I'm pretty sure it's going to be pretty similar to that. So yeah, mask and well, gloves. Well, that's good and, to know. I don't turn in my own boxes, so my husband does that, and you know, we have a trailer. So that works out. Oh, looks like I can pass that part. And the cool thing is it's kind of like it's different now because if you're in line now, they'll say you're okay. Before yeah. it was like you had, you know, if you weren't at the table, it was over. You know, they'd wave you away. But now they're not waving anyone away. They're letting people, you know. Do the six feet and let everybody. Six feet in line. As long as you're in yeah. line, you're fine. Yep. Yeah. So that's well, then cool. that's kind of fine. And, and he can wear a mask. I mean, I wear a mask and gloves every day I'm at. Mills on wheels, but not a big deal for me, you know. So let's talk. Let's just jump back a little bit. When you're doing your backyard and they they getting really pissy with you and like, listen, this lady's killing us. She needs to move into the pro series. And you said it took two years. What what do you find was the biggest transition that you had from backyard to pro? At learning brisket, you know the competition way of brisket, and uh, you know because. You know, I could cook a brisket, but what you eat at home, I mean, to me, what I cook and eat at home is 100% different than what I, you know, cook at a competition. Totally different. So let me you know, I don't inject with phosphate. I don't use the same rub. I don't, I don't do any of that at home. Are you cooking at competition? Are you cooking at whole or are you separating? I did it both ways. I think at this point I'm going to cook it whole. I've cooked it both ways. Um, sometimes I take a look at the brisket too, and when I'm trimming it, and I don't, I don't usually pre trim them, uh, I take them whole and do them on site. I, I kind of depends. I'll look at it, and if it's got a really huge point and I can't like trim it enough to flatten it out, you know, to give some good even, I'll actually cook it separate. I've did it both ways. I'm not, I don't care, you know what I mean? It doesn't bother me because I have a timeline for both, you know. Which I know most people kind of stick with it. I've had people that try to like watch or they're not really shigging, but I have people, my trailer's open. I have Pete Judd. Everybody can come hang out with me. And uh, as long as we can fit in there, you know. <laughs> um, so I've did it both ways and have people think I'm trying to trip them up. I honestly, some like the briskets I have in the freezer for this contest, when I break it down, I'll decide then. There you go. There and you I'll go with this timeline. <laughs> and when it comes to brisket, are you doing just the flat? Are you doing the point? Uh, do you do burnt I, ends I cook, always? I cook both. I cook both, and the burnt ends turn you turn out right. They go in the box. If they don't turn out right, they don't go in the box. So you're just deciding on, on the fly there. But you're yeah, trying. But exactly. ultimately, your best box is to have your burnt ends in there. But ideally, that's what you want. That would that would be the goal. But you know, I just I got a few comment cards that tick me off. You know, have, you've been to Texas, and a burnt end does have some crust to it. If you put anything in a box for a judge with some crust on it, like what a real burnt end, like where it just has some crust, you, you know, you're not going to score good. It has to be like 
Yeah. <laughs> like the sponge. <laughs> yeah. Marshmallow. Like a marshmallow. sponge, yeah. but no, but you know, no, almost like overcooked pot roast, I think. It's more like that. I know it's fun because like burnt ends, you know, it's, it's right there in the name. You know, like I said, the best brisket mm-hmm. I've ever had was a burnt, burnt end and it was crispy on the outside. Uh-huh. And, Texas, crunch, that's the way it would and then just and not juicy, soft. you know? Oh my yeah. gosh. It was, yeah, it wasn't that soft. Mm-hmm. No, it wasn't pliable, but it was really juicy inside still. And man, it was, yeah. whoo. Where was See, that? See, I brisket? love that. That was and Chris Marks. Cooked them at home. Oh, Chris Marks cooked mm-hmm. that brisket. And so you did that yeah. in his class. Yeah, I did in his class. Wow. And oh. I, yeah, and so it was so good. At, he was only giving one sample. So the next time I took it, I actually brought a mask so I can go back through the line and get a second. <laughs> He's like, is, oh Lord. Is that Bill You're Clinton? Funny. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're not talking COVID matter. We're talking actually no, full, actual, full on full on like Halloween mask. mask. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm like, how are you doing? These <laughs> guys want him to put a bush one on, then you yeah, get, and then you get the around. penny. What is it? Penny roll, the you know, the clown, you yeah. get one of those on <laughs> Sadly, yeah. sadly, Chris Mark still says that all five president a living presidents came to his class <laughs> <laughs> to this day. <laughs> <laughs> so Sorry, Chris. <laughs> the cat's out of the bag. It is what it is. Um, <laughs> so what what would you suggest someone who wants to jump in from backyard to go into pro? What what you know, what what kind of jump do you what would you say to someone? Say, hey, I'm in the backyard, I'm jumping to pro, what do I do? What do I need to do to get better? Oh, to get I would go cook with it. You gotta have some friends. I'd go cook with a team and run their boxes. For them or something like that, so you can be productive for the group, or you know, be the dish bitch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, and please, <laughs> if you guys ever want to do that, hit me up. I'm, I love those people; they're my favorite. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. That's exactly what I would do to see experience. Because people think, oh, well, if I can do free meat, you know, for if you're if it's very different cook, than cooking at home, having a party and cooking chicken and steaks and burgers. Oh, I cook, you know, four meat for my 4th of July party. It's a different timeline. And it's also different, you know, if you cook the FBA or, you know, the GBA, you know, their timelines are different. Some have an hour in between, you know, some have 30 minutes in between. 30 minutes is tough. I really, really respect, uh, I, don't, I don't know any girls that do this all, I'm going to say guys, that cook single, you know, by themselves. And they're able to get those boxes in, you know, with 30 minutes. I, I wish I could. I, I can't do that. Thank right. God I have my husband. <laughs> you know, chicken <laughs> and ribs go really fast. Pork is kind yeah, of like, no you're, like, you're like there. And then it seems like I'm standing around twiddling my thumbs waiting for brisket every time. Yeah. I'm like, um, yeah, mine, mine, you know, pork slows me down. And I don't like have, you know, some people, I always do my box this way. I always do my box this way. Mm-hmm. I don't always do my box the same way because I let, you know, I don't know if I'm going to get a great money muscle. Great. Yeah, Cause I only cook two bites. I'm not cooking more than two bites. I cook one brisket. I cook 12 pieces of chicken and sometimes less, you know, I'm not going to cook. You know, and I cook three racks. Of ribs. If I could, I'd probably cook two. I you know, I try to cook little do. meat. I'm not messing with all that. You know, if I had six butts, I have to break all that down. You know, I like to take it, you know, once it's rested and break it down, put it right in the box. I don't do the, I don't want to do the Cambro thing. I don't want, you know, I want to send it right out. Like, mm-hmm. it's almost like, you know, restaurants, you yeah. salt it, you send it out. It's, uh, maybe that comes from that. You know, I may rest the whole butt. You know, of course, I like to rest the whole brisket, the whole butt, but I don't. Like go ahead, like some people I know, go ahead and separate it, right? And put it in their camera. I, I don't like to do that, and that's maybe I'm weird. I feel like Just it dries it out a little bit too. You know, when the steam's coming off, it'll dry it out if we can break it down. We always we we get our brisket. And we we have the best intention. Bless our hearts. We want to have that brisket rest, and it just never works out that way, man. We cook hot and fast, and we still can't get. It done in time. <laughs> so we're pulling it, just cutting it. It was like, oh. really? Oh, yeah, all the time. And they do really well in brisket. Yeah, we do. It's crazy. Huh. You chase the, do you chase the well, bacon in your pork butts or do you just let that go? Do you, do you try to get in there and pull the bacon out? I try if it, you know, if there's enough, it like uh, depends on the brand that you buy. Uh, sometimes, you know, they don't, the fat, I know uh, on certain brands, there'll be like a big round spot. I think. For some reason, the way they trim it, 
So you lose that. Now, you know, Comfort doesn't, you know, theirs has got a good cap of fat on it, but mm-hmm. other brands up on don't have as much of that the way they're cut. I guess it depends on which company it is, the way that, you know, they cut their meat. So, and I tend to cook larger size cuts. Uh, so, so where I can get that. If I can get it, it goes in the box. If there's not enough, I eat it. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> that's mine. <laughs> that's mine. <my, laughs> she's like, she's like, Get the bitch is off, mine, and mine. the ends of the pork muscles are mine. Everything else is up for grabs. Yeah. <laughs> I like, yeah, I like at home. I score them. I love to score them. I mean, like, if y'all ever look at my Facebook, I have a picture not too long ago. I love to score it, and I love like that fat that gets crunchy. Mm-hmm, right. It. It's the best kind. Yes. I haven't ate anything since lunch. So. <laughs> She's hungry right now. <laughs> so am I. I, I am. <laughs> I never eat for these things. It's the dumbest thing I've ever. I do a podcast about food and I don't eat I didn't before. Have time. Right? I don't know. I got home like at six fifteen my time, so I was like, "Crap, I gotta take my hair down, make it look good, put on some makeup." <laughs> See, I forget to eat. It's like literally, mm-hmm. I'll be like ten o'clock and I like, "Crap, I didn't eat anything all day." Mm-hmm. That, well, you'll you never can, hear that come can, out of my mouth ever <laughs> once. Yeah. I can't believe you can look at me and tell I don't forget to eat. It's like more I don't have time, and then I'm like, hey, I'm like carbs. never once. Like, I love hey, carbs no. and meat. I'm a carnivorous farmer. <laughs> me too. Goodness gracious. Yeah. So when you went to pro, um, you kind of, you know, like you said, it took a minute, but then once you kicked in the mm-hmm. gear, you kicked in the gear. I mean, you were doing top tens, grand champions, it's, all sorts of stuff, more times than not. So yeah, I did pretty good. I, I, my goal is to it, to at least get three calls every content. Mm-hmm. I what, might bitch a little if you know I like two fine, but I might bitch a little. Well, I mean, not <laughs> at people, you know. Right. I, I, my husband drives because I'll put the rig in the ditch, and I'm like studying the scores, uh-huh. and I'll read it. I'm like, ah, oh, you know, like what could I've done? Like, oh, if I got a tenth of a point, I would. You know, there's certain people you always want to be ahead of. Right. Yep. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, it, I mean, not that you don't like them, but, you know, sometimes they might have said something that little, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 You want to hear, uh-huh. you hear yeah. Rusty Bitch? You want to hear Rusty <laughs> Bitch? Ask him how, he did, yeah. how Chicken did at his last competition. Oh, God. <laughs> how Chicken did in your last competition. Tina, don't listen to anything he says. Um, okay. What? Tell so me. It was a KCBS World Invitational, right? Uh-huh. We're there with 100 of the best cooks of all times. And out of those 100 chickens, guess what mine took? 100 so <laughs> there you go that's how my chicken did so let's move on we can move on do you know what happened this is a true story this is how it happened one we do 6.5 ounces of chicken always i yeah. me the brilliant one was like let's do eight ounces this time and they didn't cook we usually cook up to 197 they didn't get there in time they got stuck at like 178, 180-ish, and they were dry, and they were terrible, and it was my fault, and I deserve it. I deserve all 100 last place of that. So so did you cook, whole, what kind of chicken were you cooking? We cook smart chicken, organics. Uh, like whole chicken? No. This is KCBS, so it's thighs. Uh, thighs. Oh, th- oh, you cook thighs. Okay. Yep. And so huh. eight ounces. I cook legs. <laughs> Why did you start go. doing that? There you go. In fact, it was, let me tell you, in this area, a lot of people fix, cook eight legs. And when I first started, I'm trying to remember what year it was. I know it was in Rome. And I think that's when I did like a double grand. That cut a double. Um, I think I was like one of the few people doing legs. Now everybody down there, Lord of mercy, does like. So I want to change. I want to get to that level where she's at. She's like, let me go through all my grand championships to remember what you. No, no, I don't have no, I don't have that many. But it just (laughs) went to them. No, I think it went dimly. That's when I, you know, I did well, and people were freaking out because I won with legs. They were all freaking mm-hmm. out. And, uh, yeah, that did sound hard as hell, didn't it? I didn't mean it that no, way. I'm I sorry. like it. I like it. <laughs> no, I didn't make it. I have, don't have, you know, that. But it's like, but it just coincidentally was the same time. And people were like, well, you cook plaques? Oh, my God. And then, like, not because of me, but you know, then so many people, like, now do legs. It's like, 
Okay, I tell my husband, I can only do like three more. They're still really new here. Not a lot of people right. are doing I did Cornish here. hens years ago. Oh, really? I mean, like, I, I did pretty good. I thought about going back to it, but it's really hard to figure out the box. I was going to just gonna say, then, how do you present that? Yeah. Well, I keep, I have a picture of my phone of how I did, and I'm like, how do I do, how do I get those in there? <laughs> <laughs> you know, because Cornish hens, if you go to the grocery store, they're always frozen. Yeah. They're always consistent in weight. They're Tyson is the most common brand, mm -hmm. and they're always consistent in weight. And you, you know, you trim the backbone out, you know, and you cook half, just like, you know, you cook chicken half, or you can fat cock it and then put it in the box. It's just like, you know, people freak out over a whole half, you know, a little half of the chicken. To me, if you could give each judge a half, then they get white meat and dark meat, right? But you better not screw it up. Nope. Right, and you have to brine them. Oh, too, I so. couldn't even see. The thing is, is just doing. You're talking about legs. I'm just like, <laughs> they're, they're intimidating to me. I don't they're know what easy. it is. They're easy, but like, there's all those things. There's a huge tendon. Remember, we went over that yeah. in one of our other podcasts. That there's a perfect temperature where that pops. You just gotta, do yeah, it. yeah. You, you gotta get that temperature just Great. right every single time. You guys, we I talked could, about this before the show. I can't read books. I'm not sitting there watching for poppage. I don't have that kind of attention <laughs> span. You, rem, you, rem, you just remove the tin. Take oh, yeah. it out. Is that how you do it? Is you remove the tin? And let's, let's walk through a, a trim then. What are yeah. you doing when you do that's, a leg? That's all I'm telling you. That's Next. all you get. Next. <laughs> what are you she injecting doesn't with? sauce or anything. Like, <laughs> she's just, <laughs> I trim it, I cook it, and I serve it. <laughs> <laughs> You just take it out. Like, you you did the video of how to remove the tendon. <laughs> well, that's how you win is because the judge is like, oh, bless her heart. She doesn't know what she's doing. Let's be nice. <laughs> oh, man. I, Tina, she, don't, let him, don't let him walk away with it. Well, this. if she's not seasoning it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about it. He's trying I'm to, trying to, yeah, I'm trying to remember. I haven't done a contest in so long. I'm trying to remember what. This is going to refresh you. This is your yeah, refresher. No, I need a refresher. I know that a lot of people in this area use smoking gun pot on chicken. That's a big I think one. birds, I don't use birds and bones, but I, I know a lot of teams that do very well use birds and bones. Right. I haven't, yeah, birds and bones. I smoking hot used to be good until they took the MSG out. Add it back in. <laughs> you can add it back in. Just put it in. It's not the same. I don't know their consistency. It's probably better. <laughs> No, uh, that's how I do it. Mine, I have, I have the the big one. I was add it back in every single one. Okay, but I don't use it for competition. Strange enough, <laughs> I have it all the time. I use it for everything, but I just never use it for competition. Maybe I, I like I like smoking guns on on ribs, like you can just do some like hot and spicy ribs. Yeah, for mm -hmm. me, you know, not that sweet crap that everybody does that wins. Yeah, here in Utah, like I love dry like ribs. Candy, you're not winning. Mm. I cook some ribs. Uh, it's been. It's last month. Well, it's February now. Oh, it's around Christmas time, and I, so, you know, big green egg. You know, I'm in Baxter Flip. They gave me a bottle of their Nash Nashville Hot Rub. Have you tried that? No. Ah, I did wings with it and ribs. Of course, I need some more now. And I thought, <laughs> you know, I just love this. So I just did I had some. I had like some compart ribs I had trimmed off. So I. Cooked like you know half racks, I guess you could say, and I put the Nashville hot on it. It was y'all. It was good. I did it as a dry rub, and then I used this brand of honey that I love. You'll see it in the video. They're not a sponsor, but I love it. It's called uh, Southern Farms Singing Sweet Honey. It's like habanero. You can get hot honey. A lot of people use hot honey, whatever brand you like. But I put that on them with the Nashville hot. Oh my god. You lost me at everything hot. Yeah, he, he pepper is hot to Rusty. No, mild sauce is hot oh. to me. Yeah. I oh, mild sauce well, and I'm like, Ugh! he wouldn't survive oh, really? in the South. I tell you, I, lo I loved it, you know, because they let but... me try. You know, Big Green gave me several different things to try, you know, and I, I love the couple of them I really, really liked. And that one, the Nashville hot, if you like wings or, you know, chicken fingers or whatever, it's good. Nice. I got and it's got good color. It was great on ribs. It was weird, you know, because people like, that's a weird flavor product. It was good. My mom made them up. <laughs> um, so did I. So competition, <laughs> you're, you're you're doing your thing, and all of a sudden, mm -hmm. the show Bamacue comes up. Tell us how that happened. 
they, you know, I'm trying to think where I was when they approached me. I think I was at one of the World Foods. They had knew I was affiliated with Grill. I think it, it wasn't the year I won. It was like a year two before that. And uh, they just asked me if I'd be interested in just like doing a segment with them. And I'm like, I'm here anyway. Okay. <laughs> I didn't think anything about it. But I knew like a couple of the teams that were on there just from competing with them and cooking in the Alabama, you know, barbecue association. So I knew them and I knew one of the teams real well. And as friends, we had competed against each other and, you know, we see each other, you know, sometimes outside of the barbecue event. So it just kind of started that way. It was kind of weird. It didn't, wouldn't like. I planned on it, and then they said, well, are you going to be at this contest, the executive producer? And I'm like, well, yeah, I'm going to be there. Well, can you let us know what contest you're going to be at? And I'm like, well, you mean I need to report my schedule to you? or what? <laughs> You know, cause I guess I wasn't sure where they were going. So that it just kind of happened. It wasn't like, you know, I signed a contract to be on the show. It wasn't, it wasn't like that at all. They just kind of asked me to, you know, you're going to cook this contest and that. So I just said, sure, you know. So it just happened. It was like not planned. I know that's weird, isn't it? Yeah. Well, Rusty <laughs> would be like executive producer. Let me get my manager and start working out a contract deal. He'd go all like MBA <laughs> no. with it. Like, you know, like, we, like we I did get half fun. a cold cells See, and all they this approached stuff. me, I'm like two million. And they're like, no. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm done with you. Then. I don't think um, <laughs> we find anything other than, um, you know, of course, injury things and all that kind of stuff it was just it just kind of happened and we did that and they, you know they're still not doing active shows but they're still filming some stuff for the internet um you know he, the executive producer called me several weeks ago now and asked me if i was not to talk about it so i can't tell you what it was but would you be interested in doing this thing and i'm like you know that don't mean it'll happen you know and i'm like right. Oh, that sounds fun, you know. So, and I did a couple things uh, for them that, you know, they do some, uh, uh, like, cooking for the heroes, you know. So, we did some events with Academy Sports. So, I did a couple things with them and a thing called uh, Gridiron Grilling. It was on the internet under Bama Q. I hadn't even watched it. Uh -uh. It was a girl carnivore with the host of the show, uh, Keita. I don't know if you know her. Mm -hmm. I follow her. Love her. She lives in Vegas now, I believe. And uh, we did a, a couple episodes where we cooked for um, Dr. Doom, if you watch barbecue, uh, I mean, watch basketball from years ago. And we cooked for some football players and stuff at, in uh, Montgomery at a big casino there. And we filmed it. <laughs> so I, I, I didn't even watch it. That's sad when you do something you don't even watch it. You're too famous now. Yeah. You know, you're just like, you can't be keeping no, up with all the stuff just, that you do. <laughs> no, well, it's. I you're think like, I'm another spread TV a little... show. Come on, guys. Right? No, I know it, it's a inter. It's just an internet event. No, it's not a... <laughs> I think it's more like I'm not good with like streaming and that kind of. Stuff. I don't even know how to do that. Yeah. Like to be honest, the Netflix show. I didn't have Netflix. I didn't even <laughs> really know. I swear, y'all, and y'all, everybody thinks I'm an idiot, but I did not even really know what Netflix was when they contacted me. Because I didn't know what streaming. Now I know, you know. But <laughs> you know, I thought, oh, it's like an internet thing, you know. Like, okay, that sounds fun. Well, then I went and I told Mills and Wills, hey, I'm not going to be here. I'll probably see you next week, you know. And I had some people stand in to cook for me and stuff, you know. And then I'm gone 20 days, you know. They said, well, she must be doing pretty good. She's, she's still gone, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, Call my husband if you heard from your wife. <laughs> Because they kept us sequestered, you know, we wouldn't um, able to come home or, you know, hang out with family or anything like that. And, you know, we didn't wear watches. We weren't supposed to have our phones. And, you know, we basically were mic'd up from the time we got up and the time we went, you know, to our room. So um, I had no idea of what Netflix was. I didn't have, I, even, I still don't have Netflix. I used my sister's code because it's not my thing. All you know, them, I'm one yeah. of these old school that if they still had the TV guy, they'd be like, okay, Thursday at <laughs> 7 o'clock, I need to be home because I want to watch this. You know, I'm still of that mentality, you know, because that's just the way I work. I'm very regimented about what I do. So 
I would never just go, oh, what, what, you know, I don't, <laughs> you know. So I had no idea. Now I know that because, I mean, immediately once it aired this past September, uh, we had filmed it like the previous September. Um, you know, I had still had no idea until I started getting messages from people in Dubai and Italy. And, I mean, every place you can imagine, some places they didn't even know where it was, you know. So then I started realizing, wow, Netflix is kind of a big deal. <laughs> well, sorry, I just bumped my thing. I, so, yeah, it was a little bit, a little bit frightening. I'm glad, actually, when I went to do the show that I did not know that. Right. I'm, I'm glad. But I know on set, I remember when we got there, you know, it was like hundreds of cars. And I thought, was there like a festival or something? You know, I didn't know, you know, because they came and picked me up in a car at my house and drove me like a long way to where the location was. It happened to be in Georgia, which is good. Otherwise, I guess it was a club. And I remember getting on set thinking, I mean, when I say hundreds of cars, I don't, I mean, a couple hundred cars. You know, and I got out thinking, what's going on here? I was looking for <laughs> carnival or something going on, and it was all the crew. That's how many crew people, and they had those cameras. You know, when you go to a professional football game, how the cameras that zoom on the wires. Yeah, yeah. And, and big. When I say drones, I mean drones that were like four feet across. I mean, like. You know, nothing I've ever seen before. It was it was quite the spectacle. I mean, sometimes it looked like it was daytime when we were filming and it wasn't. You know, uh. how they can do the lighting. It was amazing. It was really, it was a, a fa- even if I hadn't have lucked out and went, won it, it would have been, it was an amazing experience just to have been there. Right. I think if you get, I don't know if y'all have interviewed anyone else, you know, what they said about it, Mm-mm. you know, on the show person. or if you Oh, good luck reaching some of them. <laughs> but, <laughs> I don't know if they do this kind of thing or whatever, but uh, it it was like really opened my eyes to not only what a streaming service is, but what a big deal Netflix is. <laughs> so, so she tells you this story right here, Rusty, about how she, they drove her, you know, big spectacle, Super Bowl style. When I messaged yeah. her to set this podcast up, she's like, oh, how'd you hear about me? Like playing all like, <laughs> how do you know about just me here in my you know, little, little house, you know, like playing it up like she was nobody. I'm like, no, I didn't. No, I don't. I mean, how would any, you know, what, <laughs> I just don't, I guess I don't think of it that way. It's like I remember like when after the show aired the first time I got recognized from. Netflix. I was I had a mask on and I was at a pizza place in this little town called Hogan'sville, Georgia. There's like <laughs> there's a pizza place and it's like I mean I'm not a I could pro- well I couldn't y'all could probably throw you know a baseball through the town. I mean we're not it's like a town square that's it you know. <laughs> so I was like standing outside, you know, kind of. Because you had to wait because it was COVID. It was like the first time I got to go out to eat since everything had happened. And somebody stopped right on the street, like in this little town. Miss Tina, Miss Tina. And I turn, and I have a mask on, okay? I turn around and look. That's it. She's got pearls on. It's her. And they all get out of their SUV <laughs> immediately taking pictures with me. And it was like, you know, my, my neighbors were with me and some people that's friends of theirs that I don't really know. It was kind of a freaky experience. You know, I got recognized from Bama Q, like when I'm in the drink line, you know, at McDonald's or something, you know. But it was like, it was, it was, it was a little nerve wracking. It kind of frightened me when people were jumping out of a black SUV, you know. Well, I've watched too much ID channel, I guess. Yeah, well, that's rusty. He gets out of the car and there's paparazzi all over the place for him. So yeah. he's used to it. So, so if you need any tips. That was a whole family. Y'all don't think, I don't think it that way. They all got in there. And the thing is, they were picking up pizza from this place, curb uh. and they were in their pajamas. The family were, yeah, so, so weird. So if, yeah, if you not, doll, want to know how to act like a celebrity, just ask Rusty. He'll he'll fill you in on how to yeah, how to. Okay, okay. send me some notes. Hey, I'm send a huge me deal yeah. right now. All right, just I so do you know. know how to do email, text. I'm learning. I'm learning. I'm learning all this stuff. Hit me up. <laughs> no, I'm nobody. But it, it's funny because watching that show on Netflix, it was 
I, it's funny because before I started watching it, I, I don't know why I thought this, but Sylvie, I thought one, I thought Sylvie won it. And I thought I, somebody had, had ruined it for me. So when I watched oh, it, okay. I thought, you know, being a fan of yours before the show, I was like, oh, when is, you know, when does Tina go out of this? So I was expecting you to go out maybe third, the, where Sylvie went out. And uh, that didn't happen. I'm like, what? She's in the final? Like, she's going to win this? Like, holy crap. So it's kind of funny because mm-hmm. like, someone accidentally thought they ruined it for me, but they didn't. I don't know how I thought yeah. that. But she it was won super the funny. sandwich challenge. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe that's what it was. And I just took it as she won the whole thing. But that was a cool show. And I luckily made it to the top tier, you know. Mm-hmm. And, um, and you know, my sandwich wasn't, and they didn't like my sauce that I put on it. Because I called it the Italian swagger sandwich, you know. Cause uh-huh. my, and uh, it was good, but it was the sauce that, that killed me. I should have, they didn't like that. But, you know, I had to put like a marinara on it. It was so freedom, But anyway. <laughs> but hers was awesome. I got to taste it. Oh, she's a great and, cook. And Sylvia and I do, you know, we've known each other through, like, when we got there on set and she was there. I mean, I already knew her because I competed at World Food against her. So um, it was kind of cool to see her there, you know. And she and I kind of stay in touch. A couple of us in that group still stay in touch, or we already knew each other. I knew Grubbs, actually. You know the show I told you I was on Travel Channel? Yeah. He was actually the alternate on that show. They always have an alternate, I guess, because if somebody freaks out or, you know, does the show or whatever. That's where I met him in 2014. He was chose for that show, American Grill. And he and I have kind of remained in contact all that time. So it was really great to see him. I love, I love him a lot. He and I talk pretty regularly. I would say at least every couple of weeks we'll talk online sometimes we talk on the phone but we talk online he and i do and sylvie and i kind of shoot pictures back we like to share food pictures and comment on each other's because she likes to cook like i do mm-hmm. so what was uh, let's talk about that show for a second now we have a bunch of friends that have been on chopped and they've been on different barbecue shows and stuff like that and there's uh-huh. always these stories you know of like the craziness that went down on these shows for example <laughs> like I know people on Chopped who say that the, you know, when they're all like rushed, they're not rushed. Um, yeah. It just makes it seem like that. Is that the same there too? Yeah. Or it's just like you had, did they ever make you do something? You know, I've even heard where shows will purposely, I've heard this a couple times, so I know that it's true. Like mess with your, your cooker to like put damper and put the fire out. Does anything like that happen on this show? You can tell us. We, you know, it's a safe place. Well, you know, I'm not, yeah, right. Who all listening when, when you pray? You know, I'm not sure. And, you know, this is what's really strange because I I cooked on pellet cookers for, you know, a few years now, uh, the same one. So I'd never cooked on the one that we had on there. And it was the lobster episode. Oh, yeah. Which was a nightmare. Which and that's one thing I'll do. Live lobster yeah. is your favorite thing. No. You love no, it. No. No. <laughs> I just cooked lobster twice. <laughs> just in this this last couple of days where we were filming for my website, TinnyCanCooks.com. Anyway, <laughs> um, and I have never dispatched. I really had never taken the life in the animal and cooked it, mm-hmm. you know. So what you don't know on that is, you know, we had, I don't know if you, if you watch it again, we were cooking for 50. Jeez. So I, it wasn't just that one lobster or two that you saw. Okay. So it, if you listen real close to the background, you hear me squealing every time I had to do it. And they didn't show really the verbiage between um, Rashid and I when I had that huge one. I mean, I didn't even know lobster were that big. And I worked in the culinary field for a long time, but it was the biggest damn lobster I've ever seen. And I, my knives that the set had provided were not big enough to do that. And I didn't want to create any more. For the animal. I don't know what to say. Sorry. It still Suffering. just gives me the baby. So he comes up behind me and goes, this is a knife. <laughs> and he had one of his knives he brought from home that was huge, you know. And they didn't show that. I don't know why. Because that, I guess, would have been good TV that he brings me this gigantic knife to, to take out that <laughs> gigantic lobster that ended up, I ended up winning, you know. But I, that was on a 
pellet smoker and I put it and poured the wine in and you know, did all the, put it in this big container, had my set on the, you know, set to the temperature, poaching temperature, and I put it on. And then we had to go cook other stuff and have other challenges in between. Well, when we went back out, and I can't tell you how long it was, don't even remember me. My pellet cooker was still full of pellets, but it had cracked out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They That's didn't show that, but it might have been bad for the sponsor. I'm not sure. Uh, you know, I don't know. Right. It's TV. I don't know. So I was very, uh, I can't believe that at least it was up temperature. You know, lobster, you don't cook till. You're, you're hitting over 140. You need mm-hmm. to cook it like 135, 137 to carry over, you know, depending on what way you cooked it. So uh, I can't, so I was shocked that it came out. Now, we did have more time to prepare for that buffet, not necessarily the cooking time, but to prepare and to set up. Um, See, I don't want to say anything bad about Netflix, but in my opinion, they were really hard on Grub. And that's probably because I know him personally, and and I, and I just really like him. So it seemed like they were tough. The judges were tough on him. And I love Melissa. Boys, if you're watching, don't get mad. Because um, <laughs> I idolize her. But I think they were tough on him. Did you think that? Yeah, definitely. And I think it had something to do with, like, yeah, I think they were 100%. Yeah. Now he's real and he's hard of hearing, and and I, I think I don't know if you mentioned that live on the show. Sorry, Grubs, if I shouldn't tell that. I think it's because so of the I don't salt, know if maybe you know? he didn't hear it's a salt sometimes. Thing, I, think. I tasted his stuff. I cooked in in the station right next to him, and you know I I thought it was real. I liked it, and I told him the truth. Now when he made these tater tot things, that I did not like those. <laughs> um, I don't know what he meant. Some things he might, but his. I liked his sausage. I say I honestly did. I wish he'd send me some, but I real, I really did like it. And I'm trying to think what else that. Oh, they they didn't show a particular scene in the very end. I knew had after I had one, we were supposed to come out of those huge barn doors. I don't, you know, the barn was huge. You know, two story, these gigantic doors. Well, I'm five two, and I they wanted me to swing the doors open and come out. Well, I couldn't, you know, it was hard. I mean, I about stumbled out, and we did film that end at least 10 times, maybe. And um, I thought they should have had Rashid open it because he was so, such a gentleman and his image on that show. But, you know, he could have opened those doors and, you know, threw them, you know. But we were supposed to walk out and then kind of walk in the formation, mm-hmm. you know, to leave, you know, Sylvie, Rashid. Ashley and I in the front. Well, when I op- when I finally got these big barn doors open, there was the biggest groan I've ever seen <laughs> in front of me. And I, you know, because I it flipped me out. It's like startled me because it's right there. I mean, the people are, you know, like with these propellers going. Y'all, it's at least four feet across. So it, it was almost like I was startled every time. So, and then, Finally, when I got it right, didn't freak out and got the doors open. Um, there was these two barrels that burn barrels, like with this little gazebo area that we would walk through, and the grass caught fire. Oh no! <laughs> and I had to bring the extinguisher in and get it out. So that whole thing is not in the show. <laughs> or, or, or our our pellet grills not not all of ours working properly. That's not in the show. And there was one Terminator, you know, like ah. yeah. <laughs> here it comes it was the end of the world. Out. And it's loud. And I can't what is it out there? I threw those doors up to the expression of my face is probably like y'all are too young, probably Red Fox, y'all remember oh, the yeah. comedian? It was probably that. Yeah. <laughs> it's like terrifying. Here I come. And, uh, here I come. So that whole thing is not in there. And you know when we did the different challenges and I was with Rashid, you know. Um, we were cooked like Anna Bound period and um, gosh, we cooked like prehistory, like on the stick. Yes, that was cool. Yeah, and all that. Um, they cut out one whole challenge. We did like a post-World War II challenge. Really? Yeah. 
So like they cut spam that. and stuff? No, just the type of equipment. Oh, gotcha. Okay. And things that we were supposed to use. Yeah, they cut that. Out. So you know, there was a lot of challenges there in that show. What mm-hmm. what was like something that you really besides this, I know the whole lobster thing, but yeah. what were some things that were like really uh, you know what actually let's not go there. I want to go here. I'm gonna before I forget. I uh-huh. wanna know something. I've always been curious about this. So Ashley, he had a minute. And uh-huh. when he was down and Rashid was talking to him, he's flipping through a book. Yeah. Now, did you guys have things written down that you wanted to do or how, what was that he was looking at? Um and listen, when he had a mint, he flipped, he, y'all, it was frightening. I was like directly across from him, his station, and Groves was, I mean, it was, uh, you better get this camera. He, he, it was more than a mint. I mean, the time, it was a little bit longer, but we had to stop what we were doing. And he, he did need a minute. And things were just not going great for him. And he just kind of lost it. You know, mm-hmm. that was real, y'all. That really was. And Rashid talking to him was real. But yes. We had some notebooks that we were allowed to bring with us, not from home or anything. They gave us the empty notebook. Mm-hmm. You know, like if we wanted to like come up with some ideas, you know, like we didn't know what we were cooking, but so we could, you know, sometimes you, you might want to write down, oh, if we get chicken, I want to cook this. Or like remember what ingredients or something you might want to use, but we were not allowed to bring anything from home. So let me tell you, this is another behind the scenes. So say I was in my hotel room and I thought, well, if we get to cook chicken, I want to use this, 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 you know, to try to keep my head clear. Well, Lord knows I'm glad I learned not to say anything aloud because I don't know how they know because sure as you know what, that item would be gone. Oh, really? (laughs) Because in the pantry area, that one that was over behind Ashley where there was like ingredients and stuff. You know, they have onions and stuff. And you had a refrigerator full of cool stuff. Well, yesterday, brie cheese was there. Mm-hmm. It ain't going to be there tomorrow. Interesting. Yeah. So, yeah, it was kind of, you know, I don't know if it was like routinely. They just purposely just changed it out or whatever. And everybody had the same thing as, as far as I know, because sometimes we would borrow from each other's refrigerator. Hey, are you going to use all your cream or whatever? And everybody was really, everybody was great about that but you go into that other room and like you know there was a uh, I don't know, you know persimmons in there one day and the next day no persimmons you know because so you couldn't really plan you know you could write down what you wanted to plan ahead you know but maybe they're yeah. just switching it out so you guys didn't like oh cool they have this and then they go right. oh, yeah now we don't just in case <laughs> hey, maybe, they're trying, to try, they're, maybe they're trying to set yeah. it up to make you think that you know what they're going to have you do and then yeah hold i'm sure it was that yeah. just so you'd have to like think on your feet and the thing is you know there was gopros like right above your station and i remember i went into uh the the, the walk-in where all the meat was and i had no idea I'm sure I said things I shouldn't both say, but up in the very corner, even in the walk-in. That's a walk-in. Yes, there was a you know, you work in the restaurant <laughs> business. That's where we go to yell, yeah. scream, and, you yeah. know, just, ah. Well, well, they didn't, they didn't air it, thank God. I think <laughs> my mom would have been like, hey, who <laughs> 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 did you do that? <laughs> yeah. And then, but I, we were mic'd up all the time. And I, I remember, God, I hope I don't get trouble saying this. I remember I went to the ladies' room, and, you know, they can hear you. What are you doing in there, you know? <laughs> and uh, I said a quick little prayer, and uh, and I mentioned something in particular in that little prayer. And they have uh, – you have handlers that kind of stay with you. You've probably heard of this, that kind of watch what you do and make sure you're where you are and you're not talking to anybody or trying to call anybody. Anyway, keeping you in line, babysitters we call them. Anyway. Um, it was mentioned to me by one of them. I guess they have hierarchy of babysitters, but anyway, <laughs> they heard what I said because oh. there would have been no way anybody would have known who I had said a prayer mentioned. Interesting. There'd been no yeah. way. Yeah. But you're mic'd up. So I was in the bathroom, tinkling, you know, wash my hands and I stopped while I was drying my hands and I said a little prayer. They heard me. Did you open the door and there's a four foot drone sitting there? <laughs> no, I, no. I mean, then I went back to my station. I mean, we were, they were we were pretty free. Like, if you had to go, you mm-hmm. know, if 
you know, you had to kind of, you could say in your mic, you know, I need a restroom break, or if you hurt yourself, or um, you were needed something to drink, or you're missing something, culinary would come, you know, either bring it to you or that kind of, if they had it. So and, in the show, mm-hmm. and we all know different, but you seemed, it was funny. I don't know if, if they did this on purpose or the, you did this on purpose, but you kind of had this like, oh, I don't know what's going on. Kind of like <laughs> aloofness, but then all of a sudden you're just like, boom, execute. You know, it almost had, the, it almost had you like act like you didn't know what was happening. And I kept on thinking, I said to my, I said like, now nah, this is, this has got to be, this is weird. This is editing because there's no way she doesn't know this. You know, like you get kind yeah. of like worried about stuff. Is that just you just kind of worry warding or did you like, did they really No, like I do take- worry ward. And you know, my, I do that for a contest. I guess it's just my personality. It, my husband says I do best under pressure mm-hmm. uh, about anything that I do like when it gets down to the wire at a contest or anything or stuff I have going on at Meals on Wheels you know oh my god I gotta get like 500 meals today. I just freak out like that and then I just do it it wasn't honestly I I don't know how that my mom would always tell <laughs> if I told the story uh, it was just like I was nervous about talking to y'all but am I doing okay no, you're, you're not fine. actually. It's pretty bad. I don't know if we're gonna. Yeah, it. I'm sorry. Yeah, I know because I thought I don't know. I don't know them. We're gonna ask them. You yep. don't know why and mm-hmm. why me. You know that kind of thing. So then I thought, okay, am I gonna be able to do the Zoom thing? And I hit it, and I did okay because I thought, well, I did this a couple times. I never, you know. <laughs> that's so great. that's how I am. Though. Yeah, exactly. That's how I, well, I like, ah! I'm, I'm bad. Like. If you don't know me personally, I'm bad about stuff like that. I, I to this day, yeah. we've done how many episodes of this this podcast, and I still get nervous every single time we do it. He paces back yeah. and forth. When I'm competing, it's just like, I'm the same way. I'm like, oh yeah. my gosh, oh what's uh-huh. this? What's why this? And uh, yeah. but then when all and of a sudden it comes down not. to it, I'm like zen. Yeah. I'm like whomp. Right when I'm in the, the yeah. zone, I'm in it. You know, but for that's, up until that's then, exactly what my husband says. Oh, she does this under pressure. You know, so. You know, worked out, I guess, so far. But, you know, I've been that way. You know, I used to play softball and I get all the tight for the game. Or, you know, any other sports I was involved, it's like, I'd be all upset, you know. And then, oh, okay. I did fine. <laughs> but that, I think that's what the best part was, is that the way that you, you were in that show is just so, it was great. Like, you were my absolute favorite part of that show. Oh. And it wasn't even close. And you know what's funny is, I would, you know, I like to say that I was like, um, I was a good actor, but it, honestly, I, if I seemed stressed out, I was stressed out, and I didn't know. A lot. I had, y'all, I have never cooked on that type of pellet grill, and it's totally different than the ones I have. I've never cooked on a lang. At that time, I'd never cooked on a big green egg. I'm trying to think what else we had to cook. Of course, I've never cooked on like sticks like yes, that. Had, uh, pit uh, yeah, I de- never had I cooked on, and they were hunsickers. Uh, oh, ne- yeah. And I wish I had one now. That was really cool. I like the foot pedal. And you could bring, anyway, I loved it. I never, I, I swear on my papa, never cooked on any of this before. People think I have, even now. Never cooked on a block pit uh, or built one, for that matter. Uh, wish I'd have known that. I could have studied up on it. But uh, I kind of depend on Ash. On I've seen them, you know, been around them, but, it, you know, I wouldn't know how to do that. Turns out now, if I ever do it, I think I'm going to build me one here at my house. You know, I'm going to build it for me where I can reach across it, Mm -hmm. you know, do it a little more narrow. (laughs) And, you know, I know to find some chicken wire and wrap around it. You know, I I learned that. Um, But I think I'm going to build one. But, you know, when they're that far apart, but when they had Ashley show up, I didn't know. I thought he was going to stay, you know, all night. No, right. it didn't work that way. Uh uh-uh. uh. He actually left because at that time they become like you like union workers or something oh. because they're not contestants in the show. So they had they had to actually, you know, leave for a while and go to the hotel or whatever and then they could come back. And I couldn't tell you what time because it was daylight and I didn't even know it. I'm in the kitchen like, making sides and I think my batter for my cobbler and I'm like Oh my God, because he's a son coming up in the window of the barn with a, that big giant fan was. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I just remember something else that the show didn't show. 
when I went to cook my cobbler for the final, you know, uh, with the hops, my oven was off. See? See? They turned it off. And every day our oven was on. Like, you know, people are like, how did you cook something? I think it was set like 250. Everybody's was set on 250. That way, you know, you could go ahead and turn it up more, depending on what you were cooking or keep something warm. And uh, it was off. And I remember going to put my cobbler in, and I probably said some words that they edited out because <laughs> they had switched my station to the other side. Too. And uh, which it was equipped the same way, but when you're used to working on the right, not the left, whatever, I, it was stone cold. Wow. So that's the thing. So that's I a put tip. that cobbler in the oven and turned the oven on and cooked it from a cup, wow. which I never did that either. Mm-hmm. that's a tip if you're ever going to these shows guys you have to like in the kitchen right you know this you have to go through and do checklists of cleanliness and who it's on and what's off and all that stuff make a checklist of your station <laughs> yeah. and go through it make sure everything's on even your Turn your oven out yep. yeah <clears throat> or make and sure you that know, it's on. i don't and i i can't you know they kind of they were like a convection oven and i i kept reliving that in my mind i know that it was on because you could hear it you know but I forget turned. I don't know. Just saying. <laughs> I've, I've heard by a couple I people, people things, on you know, different shows will, that say that. Yeah, say I will, that. yeah, I will keep probably thinking of things that happen you know, after the fact. But it was because I've only watched the show one time when it aired. And let and let me tell you what's weird about that. My husband decides. Okay, we've had enough of everything, so we rented a house in Florida that takes pets, and we went and guessed you know, when the show aired was September 18th. I don't know if y'all know what happened in this, the, in Florida. Uh, Hurricane Sally yet? Oh. <laughs> and we're at the beach. Oh, no. <laughs> in a house. Oh, man. Well, my husband didn't want to leave, and that's when the show was supposed to air. Yeah. So he didn't want to leave. You know, he's going to get his money's worth. That, <laughs> I was like. <laughs> like Rusty. <laughs> yeah. What? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> So we stayed, lost power, lost all that. Yeah. Watch yeah. It, huh? no, well, it's what worked out. He has a distant family member that lives in Fort Walton. We're in the, like the Destin area. Right. So they're like, they kept, and we went there through all this weather. Okay. We're, we're on the road <laughs> and we go there. Well, guess what? Their power's out. Oh, no. Well, his son lives a few months, you know, same town, but on the other end, which is, you know, okay. We're heading closer to Pensacola, which is, isn't that where it came across? Right. I mean, anyway. Yeah. So, <laughs> we go there. They have power. Wow. <laughs> they have water. Everything. So, we're able to watch it, but they had a bunch of friends over, and they're like, I tried to do like a watch party. It was a total really bad scene on Facebook. Sorry, y'all. Yeah, I mean, watching it was like watching paint dry if you watched it. You know, I just, I forgot I did like a watch part. I don't even know how to do that. Push the button. And I'm trying to watch the show, trying to tell everybody to shut up. Well, it was a group of people that didn't know me and didn't give a crap. And there's a storm going on. They're having a hurricane party. And they're, you know, whatever they're doing. So I didn't really get to hear it. So, I finally came home and the couple that I missed, I, I watched using my sister's code. So I really only watched it one time. And part of it was during a hurricane party. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. And those people could get, you know, don't know me from having house cats. So they didn't really care, you know. And I'm like, I wanted to stop. I don't even know this. Shut the, you know what, up. So I'd like to watch this and see how they portrayed me because I was really worried because I know people. They add it, mm-hmm. you know, they could have made me look terrible or I don't know. It's no, opinion. I think you looked, you, you were fine. It was awesome. I mean, like I said, you got a little worry worry <laughs> about stuff, but I was like, it was great. I freak, I love that show. It was, it was really, well, really y'all cool. been talking to me for a while. I was probably telling my personality is just that. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. cause you know, I just, uh, <laughs> the show comes on and, and it's, you know, I, I, I hear it's, it's doing great. So doing a second one from what I understand. Is that right? Yeah, for, I mean, I, 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 I'm almost 100% positive, 98% positive, but that's not because they called me or anything. That'd be good if they did. I'd love to judge it. And oh, I'd go. like to give some challenges. Not, but listen, if you ever judge, do me a favor. 
don't, I don't know why they do this, but every single judge, they like have to be super, super mean. You know, it's like, they're they're always like, you're about to serve me some delicious food and it just better be the best because I'm crabby, you know, like. (laughs) Eh. But you know that because I'm, I'm there. <laughs> no, you're like, yeah. uh, okay, don't be that way. Be like, what's up? Cool food, like yeah. Brad from the shed. Yeah, he's great when he judges. Um, so you do this, you win it, and yeah. um, you know, COVID hits. You're not doing much, but you're kind of doing a lot of stuff. You're cooking, but you also um came up with your website, Tina Cooks, Tina Cannon Cooks. Tina, yeah, I did. And now it's what like you can a- do is that you sign up. Mm-hmm. It's ten. It's nine dollars ninety nine cents a month. And what happens when people sign up for that? Well, they'll get to watch. Well, I do some things on there that's no. Co- you can go there and have some videos, and they're they're editing some more now, and see some recipes and some techniques and questions, and that no charge. And then on the subscription part of it, it's like you can watch me actually cook with me on that particular dish. You know, I'll okay. cook the entire dish, give the entire recipe. So it's like, I guess, the new concept of cookbook for us. Okay, so what, what happens <laughs> And then is... I'm developing it into, as I build the community on there, is I'd like to cook like live with somebody. Okay, today on Thursday, we're going to make da-da-da together. Here's your list of ingredients. Mm. And then let you get your list, and then we're going to we're gonna cook it. Because sometimes it's like, you know, people can read a list of ingredients and go to the store and get it. And then it's like, oh, you know, I'm not going to do it. You know, like it's more like, it, like when I used to watch my mom or my dad or my pop all cook, you know, I learned more by doing like kind of doing it with them because that's the way my mind works than to read about it. Does that make sense? Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. You, I don't know if you learn better that way. I mean, Same. even in Hands school, on. Yep. whatever class, I got to do it. I have you to. Know? Well, I learn by doing it and then reading about it and then doing it again. I, I, I'm like a five process yeah. guy. I'm not yeah. very smart. Yeah, you got <laughs> you Watch, rent, it. repeat, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> like, so I'm developing into more of that and a lot of feedback from people. But I mean, I already have quite a few subscribers, you know, and then I've got some discounts that if you're a subscriber that you can get on products. Uh, and actually, you can go to the website, and if you click on any of my affiliate links, you know, from my website, you know, they're offering, you know, discount deals. The only one that uh, doesn't have one right now is Big Green Egg because they don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> they're too cool. Way too cool. Um, yeah. That, Believe that's me, really I cool. ask. I tried to work it for y'all. I really did. It's but, fine. It's you know, fine. We'll just pay they for had the price. a tough time with inventory. I mean, it's Christmas about wipe them out i mean when i went to get some of my stuff at the big green headquarters that's here and north of the city in atlanta here i mean it was like from slim pickings for me too so i went through the same thing that everybody went through at christmas time trying to get items you know well plus but they're corona. coming back up now back up you know everyone because their in the quality business. control yeah well their yeah. quality control i think is really really high uh on things i mean if there's like a wrong dimple on it you know they don't accept it if, you, if really you're good. listening now, I will take it for free. That wrong right. dimple one, send it my way. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know if there, but I mean, I know like, I mean, like, uh, you know, I've had other Komodo sauces that I've cooked on. I have friends that have other brands. And, you know, I'm like, I'm short. I'm 5'2", so I have a, you know, it's quite hefty, you know, mm-hmm. and I'm old. Anyway, I can just do this with, and I've got an XL. Oh, I wow. mean, that's a big, that's a big X. You know, yeah. and I can, and I have like a paver patio around my pool area, my she shed area where I've got several smokers and grills. I can, I mean, it takes me too because it's so wide. I can roll it around everywhere. So that, yeah. that's pretty good. I mean, it's the way the wheels and the casters and everything are. I mean, I love, I honestly do love it. I mean, people like, yeah, you know, when they, when they mentioned, you know, they wanted me to be a bachelor and I went and visited there, you know, just. Can I do? I want to. I cooked with their chef there, and I liked it. Their chef's a chick, so that was awesome. And we cooked all day together. And I'm like, yeah, I want to do this. That's nice. cool. Yeah, yeah I, I I've cooked on similar products. Um, yeah, and we have a friend Dan Phelps who does on to the on those, and he he loves them. Right. And yeah, I think they're great. Like I cooked yeah. a was it a rabbit. Yeah, and it turned out fantastic. And I never even really used one before, and it was so user friendly that it was not mm-hmm. hard to figure out. You know, it's just yeah. super no, simple. No, easy. And then any kind of charcoal. You know, like I'm used to 
you know, I use this kind of charcoal and this smoker, this kind of charcoal and this smoker, mm-hmm. this kind. I've used like, the, you know, coconut charcoal. I've used, and I've tried like different, you know, different things in it to kind of see. It's, it's, it's easy, I think, for, you know, if anybody really wants to cook hot and fast or slut. I mean, it, it's easy. It's intimidating to some people, but it's not hard. I mean, a pellet cooker is easy too. You know, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's true. pretty easy. That, that's what I always recommend. I think pellet smokers will actually um, gas grills. I think will eventually go away. What people learn about pellet smokers, you can get that flavor, mm-hmm. and you can Susie, you know, pound maker can go boop, you know, and you don't get dirty, you know, for girls. You, Salt no, you don't get dirty. There's right? something about gas grills, though, that I just love. I remember, you know, I haven't cooked on one in I'll so have... long, but then I went over to my brother, my sister's house, and my brother in law was cooking on his gas grill and he's cooking burgers, right? And of course, I judge yeah. him because right. that's what we do. <laughs> and I eat the burger. I'm like, oh my God, that took me right back to seven years old. This is amazing. Like, I'm getting um, a gas grill for this because, <laughs> you know, there's no, like, flur fluff to it. It's just, like, a solid burger, you know? You know, you know what I hate about gas? But, Honestly, it's like, I can go to my pellet grill, lift up the lid, and be like, oh, I got enough pellets to go through this cook. Gas, I'm just cooking along, and then, boom, it's empty. Yeah. <laughs> but you got to think about yeah. this, though. It's a gas grill. It's outside. It's fun. It's fun. All right. yeah. well, now, let's talk more I about- learned to never say never. You know, I right? wouldn't. Right. I, I'm not going to say I'd never want a gas grill, but I've learned my lesson because I remember I thought when I was using the Brinkman and then the Weber, I thought, I'm never going to cook gravity that gravity cooker. That's cheating, but that's like, yeah, you need to cook it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> then I get one. Now you, have, now you have a big yellow one sitting <laughs> in the back of your trailer. <laughs> yeah, so I'm never going to say that. No, I'll, I'll never cook on pellet cookers. And I went, <laughs> <laughs> right. So, and then now I'm gonna get this really cool water combination. I run it's like oh, yeah. convection water charcoal, but you use briquettes. You, can't, you don't use lumps. Hmm. And I'll have to go to the store and get some because I only have lumps. <laughs> what is that? It's for the, said, that cooker that we're looking oh, that's at. Your yeah, Ryan. yeah, right. Yeah, oh, gotcha. yeah, you, yeah, yeah, you use briquettes. This is crazy, you know. Oh. And I, you know, I partnered with Fogo Charcoal. I don't know. If You've used Fogo Charcoal. And yes. I'll tell you, mm-hmm. I mean, on the egg, I get these big chunks. Oh, my God. <laughs> and you can look at it and tell it's like really wood. So I'll be, it's going to be like, uh, I haven't cooked on a briquette in <laughs> Since your Weber days. <laughs> Since your Weber days. You know, and I used a lot then. But I remember when I first started, did, you know, the minion method and the snake method yeah. and all that. You know, that's been a long time ago. But, um, once I switched over to lump, I love the flavor and the way the, you know, the burn time. And I had a friend here when we were filming that had never cooked on lump. And I said, hey, while we're filming, can you go get my egg hot? You know, but he didn't realize that it burns really differently. And I'm like, it's crashing. What did you, what'd you do? You know? <laughs> because why well, put it Flip the chimney and put it in there. I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> We're filming, and I had to have the crew wait, you know, where we could get it, you know, back rolling, you know. Oh, oh lord! So and on- then it was you know, cold, raining, and windy on top of all. Of it. <laughs> so on your website, you do like the recipes and stuff. You do tips too. Yep. Like how to remove oh, yeah. silver skin, how to stop yeah. the cutting boards from slipping. Yeah. Stuff like that, which to me it's is funny, thing. but it's funny. I had a neighbor over who's learning how to smoke, right? And he's telling yeah. me how much, how hard it is for do to do those things. Right. So I told him, I said, well, what I usually do, especially in the restaurant is I get a paper towel, wet it and put it down on my cutboard. But people don't know that stuff. The silver skin. No. He had no idea. He took, it took him yeah. an hour and 15 minutes to get silver skin off two ribs. Oh man. He didn't use it. Mm. Well, you know, beef yeah. ribs is, is hard. And then the, the video we just filmed this weekend, one of the tips is how to remove it from beef ribs. Cause it's, you know, pretty tough. Yeah, to get it I off. I love the membrane, bread. though. I love. It. I bite. I bite, and then I take it and I rip it, and it's like this little piece of like. <laughs> do you know like it's fruit like leather? Flat. No, it's like a meat fruit leather. It's amazing. <laughs> Jeez, that's gross. No, check this out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cook ribs. I'm going to take the membrane off and sell it as meat fruit no, leather. No, don't. I just do made that. a million dollars. No, you didn't. You're going to flop. 
Oh, that's no. not very nice. But anyway. I want you to do a video of that. And send it to me. I want to see that. My fruit leather. Yeah. How to store knives, which is important. How to sharpen them, which, dude, I still yeah. have struggle. I still struggle with. How to remove seeds and peppers, like the recipes you have. I mean, I looked at this yeah. and I was actually going to ask you about this bold brisket rub with turbinado sugar. Yeah. Turbinado. Does that yeah. not burn? Or how do you avoid that? I don't. It's never happened. Well. Have you tried it? No. Do you wrap? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Would do you wrap it what, about 160? But uh, to be fair, I cook on fast. I'm a barrel guy. So I don't, oh, I think okay. that would be hard for me. But if you cook low and slow, yeah. it's super fascinating because I've, I wanted to try this, yeah. this, this rub really bad because it looks super good. Yeah. yeah I mean, I, I actually also finish with it. Yeah. Re grind it oh, and yeah. use it yeah. as a finish. Too. That's is. what I compete with. But I wrap it about 160. And you know, if you go beyond that, or depending on what type of smoker, you know, a hot and fat. What kind of smoker do you have? I'm sorry. Oh, I have several, I but I, I usually use a gateway yeah. drum. Usually, yeah. I have an old hickory that it, I've been it using. It might, but. it might, in that or people that cook with like a lot of wood, you know, like kind of, it might get a little, little dark. If, uh, but normally, I never, I well, I never have that problem because that's the bulk, that's the rub I use. So. But I cook super low slow is my method, and then I wrap it one sixty. Foil mm. or paper? I use foil. Same. Yep, foils where it's at. <laughs> it's the cool yeah. thing to do. Sorry, I guys. Have, I have <laughs> did, I have used paper, um, but I find that you know because I want to gather the au jus. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I use foil, and I actually cook in a pan. Nice. Yep. Cover it with foil. That way, I capture mm -hmm. all that off you. Yep, that's that's how we do it too. It's awesome. And bold brisket brisket rub. You know, you can actually add and subtract. You know, like the, like I like to use that and add more coffee. Because mm. mm. I like that. So, like, I'll do a tiger stripe steak and I'll add more coffee to that. Ah, you ever have enough coffee? Right. Yeah, <laughs> but I just like the darkness, you know, of it. To when I do tiger, I want you to be able to see it when it's finished. But it's a cool oh. website, and um, it's really neat idea that you have. You have especially the cooking with people thing. That's super cool too. I've seen mm -hmm. a couple of those uh, recently, and it's really nice. And the Italian stuff, pepper stuff. I literally was watching it today, <laughs> and I turned to my wife and go, "We're making this tomorrow. This looks amazing." Oh yeah, yeah. and you can if you if you. It's simple, but it's one of my husband's favorite dishes. He loves that. Yeah, it's this one right here. Oh my gosh! And so. I had it in. Uh, Little Italy years and years ago, like in the 90s, and I thought, hmm. So I, I make it now. He loves it. One of his favorite things. Well, cool. Um, yeah. Where can people find you? I know that you're all over the place, but where, yeah. let's talk about where people listening, where they can follow you on the socials or wherever you are. Yeah. Well, I'm, I tried to stay consistent because I'm old and I can't remember, but I did everything under Tina Cannon Cook, whether it's at Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. And I also just started, I don't know if you know, just last night, a Facebook community page also under Tina Cannon Cooks. Because I thought, you know, I want to be able to, like, a lot of people send me pictures of when they use one of my recipes. Matter of fact, somebody made beef ribs this weekend and they sent me a picture on Instagram. So I want them to share when they make recipes or what questions, you know. And I think I might, you know, put some tips and some recipes on there, too, that, they're just quick things people can do at home because I want them to share those recipes with me and be able to like communicate with me because I do answer a hundred percent of my emails and everything. And it's a lot of them. I spend every night usually till at least 1 a.m. answering, you know, emails to or messages on Instagram, TikTok, whether they're nice or not, because not all of them are. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I just, on all social media, I just kept it at Tina Camden Cook. And the website at inacanningcooks.com. Get me and message me on there too. Awesome. Email me. Heck yeah. And then you can sign up for $9.99 a month and learn all sorts of st cool stuff to cook. And yeah. How, uh, and, and I'm going to, and them. I continuously add, I've already scheduled my next film set for, you know, spring to load more up. We film about, you know, 20 re recipes at a time and then they get loaded some every month, every month. Plus, there's always some on the front part of the page. Or, you know, this, there's not a charge for it. There's a reason to go, even if you don't want to. Subscribe. Teasers, like yes. some peach cobbler. <laughs> hey, yeah, that, you know, and you know that, did you watch the video of the peach cobbler? Uh -huh. 
That's the one that I did on the show where the oven crashed or was turned off or whatever. <laughs> but that video, my mom is in it. She mm-hmm. had no idea until, like, I think when she opened the fridge at one point, she realized they were rolling. And she was already in it then. <laughs> <laughs> and and she, she didn't know that I changed her recipe and used buttermilk because she didn't like that. Because oh, that was man. her daddy. Yeah, and using buttermilk. She had no idea which, you know, I don't know if she's even watched it because I don't think she can stand to watch herself on video. But I'm going to get her to do another one with me. Because I built a kitchen just for filming. I don't know right. if you, you know, I've kind of put that on Facebook. So I have a filming kitchen that, I just filmed there, and I do private classes. Have people come in, and we do everything out there, whether it's grilling, cooking in the ha- in the oven, on the stove, flambe, whatever. You I have people just write and say, "Gosh, I don't, I don't really grill, but I'd really like to know how to make this in the oven." So I try to always, when I talk about a recipe, not everybody likes to grill, mm-hmm. you know. So I try to give that option of how you can do this in your oven. Or grill it versus smoke it. Cause some people don't want to spend the time. So I try to always give the option to people. Because not everybody's like us and like right. to cook on the grill. <laughs> well, and uh, at the same time, then that's all we do. And sometimes right. we want to learn how not to. Right. You know, cook like inside. Yeah. Give us something else to do. Well, you what's know? that box let's that's just, in our kitchen? Let's just, <laughs> Put something in the oven today. <laughs> that's, the, that's the oven. And you know, it makes your house smell good when you cook something in the oven. It True just that. makes your house smell right. good. But I, you know, I do some Insta Pot stuff. And, uh, you know, I, I just like to cook in everything. I'm not a gadget person, but I love that spot. <laughs> right. I love, uh, I love gadgets. Know. I'm a gadget guy. Yeah. I like them. See, I'm not. You know, I have my, oh, as you can see, I've got my chef's callus here. Nice. Uh, <laughs> I think, long as you, you know, my t- my tool is a knife. You know, you mm-hmm. can do, as long as you have a, a knife. You know, so I have to look at it that way. You know, uh, and, uh yeah, just about a knife. That's all. I'm, that's all. I'm, that's all I need is my knife. <laughs> I saw your video. You temp with the knife. You do everything with it. It's amazing. It's truly watch yeah. that video. The temping with a knife video. I'm just kidding. That doesn't exist. But, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, wait, <laughs> what? Where did I do that? that? <laughs> I filmed a lot of stuff this week, and I'm learning that. And I did. I did film like my beef ribs with the Earth, the Province. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. That, that's going to be loaded up there. It's, I mean, they just, the crew just left, you know, yesterday. So, uh, you know, they all, they all added it in case I slip with this on my shit. And, you know, kind of, I get wordy, as you can see, so they have to shorten it, you know. So people's attention span, I think, online is not as long. <laughs> so I'm trying to think, you know, I did a Cajun chicken recipe. I'm going to post, actually, on my community page and maybe my Tina Cannon cook page. So I'm, I want the recipe, of course, but I'm going to, you know, some of the pictures of the dishes I cook. And I'm going to be honest. Every dish that we that is a one take. Oh, I, nice. I, wow. If I can't cook it, and you know, obviously, why do I need to make it again? You know what I mean? Right. If I can't make it in one take, then you certainly can't. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, so I want to make sure that people can can make this dish and everything's available. I'm not getting too technical, mm-hmm. you know. You know, herbs the province people that know you can get it at any grocery store. Mm-hmm. It's not like it's a big deal. It sounds fancy. And I've cooked with that for years, you know. So you can go to Kro I don't know the store in your area, Kroger's our store, Publix and Kroger. It's on every Walmart even carries it. Good Lord. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, our stores carry here too. Yep. Yeah, it's not them. a it's not mm-hmm. a unusual ingredient. It's just not especially in the South. They don't know what that is. <laughs> or there's always Amazon. Let's yes. go there. That's right. If you don't want to go, hey, I have learned over COVID, and I'm not a you know this kind of person. I have Amazon app on my phone, and I'm so excited to see it. I went, it's just your paper. I can get it. You know, I could. You know, I make fish in it. You can wrap fish in it. There's a lot of other things you can do. If you uh, cook on your smoker, some people have this thing about cooking fish in the in their smoker, especially if it's like a ceramic. Mm, cook yeah. it in cook it in butcher paper. There, there you go. it is. Pro tip. Pro that tip. Is free tip. Pro free tip. tip. <laughs> there <laughs> it is. Amazon's kind of my oh crap. I always forget to get this from the store. I'm thinking about it right now. I'm ordering it. <laughs> so right. yeah. I always have these little tiny weird things sometimes just randomly show up. I'm like, ah, it's one of those things I, I forgot. Yeah, yeah, I love I love it. And yeah. You know, I guess I can may not less, love him, but, but I love the 
Amazon. Right. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, we. So y'all haven't asked me anything like crazy. Well, there's nothing crazy to ask. Yes. We th- I was trying to scare you with that I'm question boring. early. No, no, no. no that's far great. from it, actually. Yes. <laughs> but, uh, you know, there wasn't, you know, I guess I wish I could. I could. I wish that this could be more of those like expose kind of interviews, but just, you know, I couldn't find anything on you. Sorry. You're clean like, as a whistle. Yeah. Back when I was a dancer. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The story is I, I looked you up on uh, the internet and you're on IDM, I don't know, IDMP or whatever the heck it is, the movie thing. And it had... You as a dancer. I'm like, oh, cool. And a director. <laughs> and a director. It was yep. amazing. And, and an artist. I don't know. I'm not that excited. It's because for <laughs> hair didn't cook. You know, I like here, you know, since I'm doing this homebound business thing, at, I like it because it's a small, intimate kind of, I built like a, I had a farm table built out of barn wood from a local guy that's 86 years old. It's nine feet long. So, and then I have a bar that will seat them. So, you know, we can do, where people can watch me cook the dish yeah. and participate or just hang out and have a party, you know, if they want to. So and I'm kind of keeping that to like 12 people, you know, they're manageable. If they get drunk, you know, <laughs> 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 you know but that way, if people want to be participate, I have enough room, you know, and it, it's smaller. You know, I cook on such a large scale at Mills on Wheels. It's kind of cool to have a smaller group. Let's come in. And, you know, if you, we have people that just want to do it, shower wedding shower or whatever we can like all cook or we can y'all can hang out and i'll cook for you sir oh, that's cool that's you know i can manage that by myself that way i don't have to have other people come in because you know i work pretty good with myself there it is <laughs> let's go and have it's a other people i do it i may yeah, not if play I'm nice in alabama I'll, yeah. I'll, we'll stop by like ah instead of going to the restaurant let's go to tina's house and sit back and relax and Get some yeah. herbs yeah. de pro- de pro- Provence beef ribs. Yeah, put your pinky out with yeah. that. If you eat ribs cooked with herbs de Provence, you got to hold them like this. You do. Yeah. Pinky's up. Yeah. yeah, yeah, pinky's up. That's right. <laughs> yeah, y'all should come. Y'all Not should beef come ribs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just had people here from Texas, and they stayed here. People from Pennsylvania. Y'all should come. All right. Oh, yeah. Wait till it warms up so we can get the cool. All right. Well, we, yeah, well, you know what, though? Here it's 19 degrees in the desert and it's snowing. So I'm sure it's fabulous weather there. <laughs> uh, let me say, no, we're having a cold snap. Let me see. Look, I got a weather out. 50 degrees. I'm getting so technical. 36 oh, degrees. That's actually cold. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. Okay. That's All right. cold. But I mean, it's been, you know, well, we got, like, then we got 57 coming up. So, there it is. Yeah. Let's see where we're at. We right. Southerners, we don't, we don't like anything below. We're the same, same. Wow, we're at forty-five degrees right now. I will take my foot out of my mouth. Give me one moment. <laughs> what? Goodness yeah. gracious! Well, hey, listen, Tina, we we love that. We, I'm so happy to have you on. I, again, I am a huge fan of of you, and I hope that you do so many more shows because I love watching you on TV. Um, I loved watching the showdown, and I I really hope if you're anyone out there listening, put put Tina on more television. Yeah, because it's awesome. Uh, like should, should we start a hashtag? Yeah. Should we? Should we what would be a good hashtag? hashtag? Tina on TV. <laughs> Tina on TV. <laughs> there it is. But it's my mom's I'm name. I'm learning my about mom, hashtag. Too. My mom's name's Tina too, so she might think it was her. She's like, I don't want to be <laughs> oh. on TV. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but we do appreciate you. I'm, like yeah. I said, I'm a big fan. Everyone, go over to your website, TinaCannonCooks.com. Sign up or just check out the sweet. Italian, yeah. There you go. Yeah. If you're watching on the YouTube's right now, you can see your. We can order those soon, right? No, you know, somebody sent me this as a gift. A, t- a team that actually I met them on their first cook, oh, nice. and they said I was so nice to help them, and they're and like we've been friends ever since. Oh, cool. Nice. And he said he he does this for a living, like his real job. And he sent this to me. I thought, like, oh my god, it's so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> I think yes, because yeah, you know, when I get stuff, I like to I just. I think it's so nice that people would take time to like send me something. I mean, like me, you know. So every time I get something, I do a video on my page of getting it. I did one last night. Yeah, you did. Somebody said, hey, peanut brittle. They sent me like homemade peanut brittle, smoking hot chicks. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, I was, oh my God. You know her? She was on the podcast. I don't know her. Right? Yeah. No, well, smoking hot babe. Oh my god, y'all! Babe. Oh, okay, my sent me some brittle with like habanero in it. Oh man, no habanero. Yes. 
No. Winnie. Yeah. Winnie. Come on, no. Not you. Yeah. Not me. No, no, you, can the brittle. you can quit the podcast chocolate. again if you want. No, I don't do brittle. I can't chocolate. do hot. Chocolate. Have her again. It's delicious. And her, oh, and her hot sauce is like a vinegar hot sauce. She said, she said, she said okay. you should try it on greens. And we eat like a lot of collard greens here in the South. And it's good on brains, I can Two tell you. Two hashtags now. Hashtag Tina on TV. Hashtag stop putting hot stuff in things. No. Nope. I'm not going to use that one. <laughs> hashtag more hot stuff in things. No. Yeah. Anyway. I'm with that. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to let you go, Tina. We appreciate you. And hopefully we can have you on for a live down the road yep. so people can ask you questions because. I would love it. I know that would be a lot of fun for us, too. Yeah. So I'll, we and will I'll do wa- that. And I'll watch my language. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we appreciate your time and, and you have a great day and good luck to you and all and have some fun this weekend. Yep. Thank you. Bye. Y'all.